Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Happy November, everybody. It's the beginning of another month and I cannot believe we are almost at the end of the year. I feel like it has flown by, but I am going to be sharing with you my sewing plans for this month and this video is gonna be a little bit different. So every, I wanna say every year, maybe every six months, I start to take stock of all of the works in progress that I have. And this year, there's a lot. And I think what happened was, so I moved to Charlotte from Charleston last December. And so all of those like fall projects that I had started in Charleston, I just kind of put away, packed it up, moved here, and then started on new projects whenever I got here. And so all of those have been sitting in a lovely little organized pile in the corner of my sewing room for all of these months. So now is the time for me to tackle them. If you've noticed the past, you know, you can start to tell like a little bit of a trend. Um, so the past couple months in my makes videos, it's always been like, I planned on making this thing, but I didn't quite get to it. Some of the projects that I have wanted to work on, like the navy and black boucle sparkly jacket, got cut out, haven't even started sewing it. This project back here wasn't even in a plans video. I just got a wild hair up my butt and was like, I wanna work on this, so I think I will. So I have this half, well, it's all cut out, and then like half of a bodice done, so that needs to get finished. In addition to this array, this buffet of unfinished projects. So I'm gonna be showing you them today, um, but I just kinda wanna hold myself accountable a little bit by putting all this out there and hopefully I won't feel too shameful about what I'm about to show you um because there are a lot and some of them I don't even remember cutting them out I don't remember what they are I don't remember anything about them so there's that all right so the very first one is a black jacket. This is one of those that I'm not entirely sure what I'm what I'm doing. Um, actually, I know exactly what this is now. Okay, so this was a refashion fail. So I had, okay, little pieces flying everywhere. I had cut apart I don't even know what's happening in this bin. This is a, not a good one to start with. I cut out something. There's pattern pieces in here. This is Simplicity 1652, which is not what this is. 1652. I have like a McCall's pattern in here. I have, for some reason, this Vogue wardrobe pattern in here. That's not what it is. Um, 1652. I have no idea what this is supposed to look like. I don't even know where the instructions are, but I know that I tried to make it. Oh, here we go. Maybe this is it. 1652. Yes. Okay. So I tried to make this simplicity dress out of a black, like moo moo type shapeless black something or another. And I think I went wrong in cutting it out because this one has all of the princess seams and everything. And I couldn't quite get the pieces all cut out from this. So this might be one of those things that's really easy to just take a look at what's going on in here and then just decide, am I throwing this away, packing up the pattern and putting it away? Or am I gonna try and salvage this? I think I remember when I put this away, I was like, this is a fail. So we'll see. And obviously in this little bin, I also have other random patterns. So I need to probably, I was just so proud of myself for being so organized. Um, okay. So I also have what looks to be Seamwork Danny. Who remembers what Seamwork Danny looks like? I have this terrible lining fabric, polyester, 
and also leather. Hmm. So Danny might be a dress. Danny's definitely a dress with the bodice facings. Here is the bodice. Wait, here's the bodice. So it's a cute little faux leather. It's not even leather. It is like a coated, I don't think it's denim, coated twill. I'm not even entirely sure where I got this fabric. Either way, that looks like it's gonna be super cute. I don't remember cutting this out, not one bit. I don't even remember Seymour Danny. Nothing, here's a pocket. <laughs> okay, so Seamwork Danny in a black coated leather looking material. Great, that'll be fun. Then I have this, this was just a couple of months ago. So I do remember this one. It is Simplicity 8417 and it is this middle top here and the fabric looks like this. You guys probably remember this if you, even if you've just been following for a couple of months, I just talked about that. So this is a cute little fall to spring top um, that I wanted to sew up for when the weather is like it is now. So this is very timely um, and that'll be really cute, I think. And then I also have McCall's 7538. This is kind of like a tried and true for a lot of people. Um, so I'm excited to try it. And it looks like I cut it out of two different prints of this double brush poly. So without getting it too unorganized, one of them is this larger stripey looking thing. And the other one is this little one here. Um, this is partially sewn. I have some serger seam. So this has already been kind of getting started. Maybe I've done the bodice, but you can see this is a really good illustration of just how it's sewn together. So I have some version of that sewn up. <laughs> so I'll have to go through and figure that out. Then I also have my beige rayon twill trench coat. Um, you guys might remember this from the socation that my that I went on with two of my friends. Um, this is very close to being done. I think I just needed like the belt or the buttons or something. Um, I actually have it in my coat closet. Hold on one sec. It actually looks a lot better than I remember. Okay, so here it is. And I did the burgundy piping like all around. It's really nice. It's got the welt pocket. It's got the little, um, like, I don't know, wrist belts. <laughs> what do you call those? I don't know. Um, and it's got like belt loops sewn on and the lining is completely done. So it looks like it needs a hem. It looks like, no, the hem is done. The hem is somewhat done. The middle part where you, where I turned it out is not done. Um, the sleeves are, yeah, so I've just finished bagging it, I guess. So yeah, I just need the belt and the buttons. So this is super, super close and it's going to be really cute um, in the fall and spring. So again, this is Vogue 8884. I've had a lot of fun sewing it so far. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely, I mean, that's got like a couple more hours left, you know? Yeah, well, I could have done a little bit better on the sleeves. I don't know, anyways, cute. Okay, it's kind of heavy, but I guess for a full length coat, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, we did that one, we did that one. This is, okay, so this is another coat that I started last year, not Vogue 9157. I'm pretty sure that I'm making this version. And the fabric, is a gray melted wool like this gray wool and then the lining is this that I got from Joanne you guys probably recognize that print they did it in a couple different substrates I know they had a knit version and then this kind of like lining silky types version um, that they have there but I went through and I did like thread markings and like I was doing it right I was doing it right so I've got the buttons for this already. 
So again, that was Vogue 9157. And that's like more of like a winter coat. The other one is more of like a lightweight ish coat. Um, and this one is full on like wool. So nice and warm and cozy. Um, speaking of warm and cozy, I also have this fun little project. Okay, so last year McCall's came out with this pattern, not uh, 7695. Do you guys remember that one? And so I wanted to make this vest. Joanne came out with this like quilted um, gingham, quilted gingham, uh, like flannelly type fabric. A little lumberjack now that I'm thinking about it. The wrong side is this gray. And so I thought I would make that vest and do all of the trim. Like you can see, they have all that bias tape on hers. I thought my trim would be this leather bias binding. And I remember that I got started on this and the pockets are the first thing that you do. And turning the corner on a, with bias trim is not as intuitive as you would think. And so I started to do it and I was like, oh, this looks awful. And so I just put it all away until I could learn how to do that. Um, so I'm sure there's like a blog or a video somewhere. I'm sure the quilters of the world um, handle that all the time. All of you quilters out there are probably like, I know how to turn 90 degrees with bias. Um, so yeah, I've just got to find find what I need there. But yeah, so I've got the trim in here. I've got my zipper. Here's my zipper for it. Um, and I've got all the fabric cut out. It's unlined. So it's pretty straightforward to sew. And I feel like I have the whole body done. I just, the trim is all I have left, I, I think. Um, so yeah, again, McCall's 7695, the cute little vest that she is wearing with the bias trim. Fun. Okay. And then the last one that I have here is a real mystery because I don't even have the pattern. Um, all I have is this traced off version of the pattern. So this is McCall 7610. <laughs> Apparently I have, <sighs> that looks like an armhole, but there's a hem. So that makes me feel like it's, I'm certainly not making crop tops. Um, and I have it cut out of this black knit, right? Doesn't that look like a bodice of some kind? Um, oh, wait, here's another one. Uh, this is a pocket, oh no, side front. So side front, side front that looks like a pocket. Side front, that doesn't even make any sense. Um, what is this piece? This is back. This is the back. Oh, these are shorts. These are shorts. Definitely shorts. Look, here's the front of the shorts and the back of the shorts. Okay, so these are cute little knit pajama shorts, I guess. Um, well, that was fun. And here's the waistband, right? Yeah, here's the waistband. So whatever 76, is it 7610, 7670, 7610, one of those, 7610. Um, is a little knit shorts pattern. No wonder there's a hem on the bottom. I was like, it kind of looked like a bodice with an armhole, but the hem was like right under what would be the bust. And so I was like, I know that I did not make any crop tops. So yeah, okay, so so cute little knit shorts. That'll be really fun and super simple to sew. And I have black thread already in my serger. So I should be good to go. But either way, I also have this. This is what? Oh, it's on my cutting table. Uh, so this is doo -doo -doo, uh, Butterick 6514. I have just the bodice pieces cut out and plenty of fabric uh, to decide if I want this little sleeve or if I want like an actual sleeve. And I'm using some fabric that I got from the Ankara and Lace uh, subscription box. 
Um, I like the colors in it. I'm not a huge fan of how this got paired together, but I'm wondering if after I get all the panels sewn together, if you won't even really be able to tell that that's kind of funky, you know, since the print's kind of big and busy and all over anyways. Um, so that's where I'm at on that. But you can see the little fit and flare is really, really cute. Here's how the um, style lines are. So you can just see they're just like a bunch of different little panels that flare out at the bottom and you sew them all together and it creates a really cute little fit and flare dress. I actually have a ready to wear dress um, like this. I wanna say it's Maggie London or somebody from like a department store and I love it and always get a lot of compliments on it. So I was excited to get this pattern and this is my first time making it. Um, so, you know, the Ankara fabric is perfect for it. It's going to flare out that skirt really beautifully. Um, but like a cotton sateen, I was thinking it would also be great. Um, I, so there's a lot that can be done with a pattern that is designed like that. I've also got a ton of other fun little projects that I'm working on for the channel. Um, you guys probably saw last Saturday that I posted the first of my a weekly series in November where I am sharing some quick and easy and affordable gift ideas, things that you can make for the loved ones in your life. And so those projects are also going to be happening. Um, the first one that went live on Saturday with all the pom-poms, I'm obsessed with how all those projects turned out. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's really addictive and a ton of fun. And as I said, I will be using those pom-pom makers like they're going out of business, like they're going out of style because I have a lot of ideas like year round on ways that we will be able to use those pom-pom makers. So I'm excited about that. And then this Saturday's project is equally as fun, equally as cute, very fashionable, very stylish. Um, which is a lot of fun. So I'll have those. There's um, five Saturdays in November. So you will get five project ideas um, to get started on. And they're all stuff that you can do like in a couple of hours um, and very affordably. So that's, that's always really, really great. Um, I think handmade gifts are just the way to go. And if you can do it and not break the bank, you make such an impact on someone else's life and they love that gift and they remember it forever and ever, but it didn't really cost you much at all, um, which is really nice. Anyway, so I have that going on. Um, so I will be a busy little bee here in my sewing room. I'm not planning on getting all of these done in one month. Don't worry. This isn't like a sweatshop or anything, um, but I do want to tackle um, a bunch of them and maybe by the end of the year, get them all done. I don't know. I do have a holiday dress project that I will be sharing with you guys very soon as well. I got the fabric from Fabrics and Fabrics in New York City. It is going to be my holiday dress for this year. Um, so that will be a ton of fun and I can't all wait to tell you guys more about that. So stay tuned. And I didn't mean for this video to be like a giant teaser for everything that's happening, but just in talking about things that I will be working on, things that I'll be sewing. This is all what's buzzing around in my mind at all times. I have some fun craft projects, some fun holiday decor projects. You guys really responded so well to my Halloween decor. So I thought, let's just keep that going. I'm going to try and anytime I do something that's not on a sewing machine, I'm going to try and always keep in mind that you guys are all sewists. And so the DIY, like more crafty type projects I'll do will almost always include fabric somehow because Lord knows we've got a ton of scraps and a ton of fabric and we don't always sew to keep all of those things, um, to use up all of those things. So uh, I am being very conscious of who's watching of you guys, but also trying to share some more of that side of my creative process as well. So um, stay tuned for all of that. Stay tuned for any progress that I make on my works in progress. Let me know in the comment section below what your work in progress status is like. Am I alone <laughs> that I let things like pile up for like six months to a year and then all of a sudden, it's like when the dishes in the sink pile up, 
I know there are people out there who always wash a dish and put it away or clean off a dish and put it in the dishwasher after every use. I'm not that person. Mine pile up and then when I am so disgusted and I'm like, I can't look at this anymore, then I deal with it. So that's what's happening here. This is like very indicative of my lifestyle in all areas of my home. Um, but anyways, yeah, let me know. Let's commiserate in the comments about our work in progress status. And by all means, if you are one of those people who stay on top of your products, projects, you cut, you sew, you finish, you cut, you sew, you finish every time, Preach in the comment section. Raise your hand. Say, I am that person because, you know, I think we can all strive to be a little bit more like each other and somehow end up in a happier place. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.